Another area that my group is focused on in, within this uh, general area of, of porous materials is to develop new catalysts for heterogeneous catalysis. Um, heterogeneous catalysts are immensely useful in the industry and, and widely used uh, are uh, things like zeolites. And you may be familiar with zeolites from uh, detergents. Deter uh, zeolites are used in detergents as uh, additives. Uh, but also they're uh, very, very essential for uh, the uh, refining industry. So zeolites are very useful in uh, cracking the larger alkanes into the building blocks that make our gasoline. Um, a lot of these processes that are done in heterogeneous catalysts are also done in biology. In, in natural processes, natural enzymes, they can do a lot of these fundamental transformations. For instance, taking methane to methanol. This is a fundamental transformation that many, many chemists have dreamed of doing. But there are enzymes out there, uh, natural enzymes, that can do it just fine at room temperature without any uh, drastic conditions such as high pressure or high temperature. Um, zeolites can do this sort of transformation, but at high pressures, high temperatures. So what we really want is to emulate what the enzymes do in a, in a plant, for instance, or in a bacteria, but also take advantage of the uh, good things that a heterogeneous catalyst does, which is it allows you to recycle the catalyst, it allows you to separate the, compo the substrates and the products very easily. So there are very good things about having a heterogeneous catalyst. Uh, what heterogeneous catalysts can't do, like I mentioned, they can't operate under the same conditions as a natural enzyme. Um, and they can't, and I believe that one of the reasons for that is that they are just not as dynamic as an enzyme. When you think of a protein, uh, you think of something that's kind of floppy and it's very dynamic and it has a lot of conformations. Heterogeneous zeolites are typically solids. Okay? What we've discovered is that these metal organic frameworks are actually very dynamic. They allow bond making, bond breaking, very similar to, happen, to what happens in enzymes. So what we think is we, we can do now, what we think we're capable of doing now, is actually emulate some of the reactivity that the enzymes do under much milder conditions than other typical heterogeneous catalysts. And this would be huge because we could perhaps make uh, reactions happen uh, at lower temperatures, and this is all about energy efficiency. If you can make a reaction happen at lower temperature and then you scale it up, you've saved a bunch of energy. One particular uh, type of reactivity that we're investigating right now uh, is uh, something called an oxidative uh, reactivity. So taking um, molecules such as uh, natural gas or other hydrocarbons and turning them into what we call value-added products. So alcohols, aldehydes, ketones, and these are um, feedstocks for the chemical industry. So being able to deliver such feedstocks, oxygenated feedstocks, to the chemical industry uh, in, in uh, conditions that are milder than what's been done before, that would be a huge advantage. Gas separations are one of the biggest energy consumers in the chemical industry because let's take air separation. Air is made of nitrogen and oxygen. And, um, and these two, or nitrogen in particular, is, is one of the premier feedstocks of the chemical industry. Why? I'd like to say that, um, or I, I jokingly say sometimes that we, we both feed ourselves and kill ourselves with nitrogen. You need nitrogen to make fertilizers for agriculture, and you need nitrogen to make uh, explosives, like dynamite for mining and stuff. Um, so separation of air, nitrogen and oxygen from air, is huge. And currently it's done by refrigeration or liquefaction, uh, and then redistillation or fractional distillation based on the difference in the boiling points of nitrogen and oxygen. And that's a hugely wasteful process because uh, nitrogen and oxygen have very low boiling points. That means that it takes a huge refrigerator that works at, say, minus 200 degrees to actually liquefy these, these uh, materials, these gases. So if you were able to make a membrane that just passes a stream of air and just sieves one of the components out, such that on one side comes nitrogen and on the other side leaves oxygen, you would have saved an enormous amount of energy. So another way that uh, we hope this will have an influence, and this is actually 
uh, in an initial partnership with uh, BP Ventures, who, who funded us through the MIT Energy Initiative, uh, we're hoping to have an impact on gas operations.